Welcome to the Toolbox Facilities Management Podcast, the podcast only for facility managers. This is where we are going to take a deep dive into everything regarding commercial and industrial building maintenance and operations for all facility managers to make you more effective at your career. My name is Jim Huntsman, your host. Let's get this thing started. Folks, welcome back to the Toolbox Facilities Management Podcast. This is Jim Huntsman, your host, and I'm coming at you from the Broken Time Studio out here in Hayden, Idaho. Uh, as we're we're kind of just crawling our way through summer here, dealing with uh, still dealing with pandemics and and hot temperatures and everything else going on. I hope you guys are having a great summer. Uh, we've had some great conversations over the last few months, and and uh, the, I've got another great one for you today, uh, something that I didn't even really know existed. So this is going to be a really interesting conversation. I'm going to get into that in uh, just a minute, but uh, I need to make you aware uh, of, of who makes this show possible, and, and the first one being Zeters. Zeters Waste Solutions is your one-stop partner for commercial waste service. So like facility managers and commercial property owners, you can stop juggling multiple vendors for their waste solutions. Just instead of calling multiple vendors, just call Zeters. You're going to get one invoice. You're going to have one person that you deal with, and they're going to take care of everything for you. One dedicated account manager, the right waste and recycling solutions for your specific properties, streamline invoicing, upfront pricing. I mean, what else can you ask for? This is a great partner for a facility manager to partner with. They serve over 5,400 sites on any given day. Uh, named Inc. 5000, fastest growing company, and uh, has had an award for the best workplace, family owned and operated since 2009. Guys, you, you, do us a favor. Do, do yourselves a favor and check out Zeters. Go to Zeters.com. The, uh, the, the website's going to be in the show notes. This is a great company. We, they've been a partner of the show for a long time now, and I just can't say enough good things. I've gotten to know the team over there at Zeters, and, and these are the kind of people, they, they will really, uh, they, they have a very unique process and, and a way of alleviating a lot of headaches for you as a facility manager. We all know waste uh, and, and waste management can just be a headache, and, and they can really help get rid of that and and save you a lot of money in the process. So that's the key with Zeters. Get rid of the headaches, save the money, get, have a better solution for the, that waste management side of your job. So with Zeters, check them out. Our other sponsor is Jimmy's Roofing ServTep. Guys, this is a company that I work for, and uh, I head up the the area for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Uh, if you're a facility manager listening to this and you have roofing problems that you need solutions for, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is in the show notes, j.huntsman at jimmysroofing.com. We're a full-service roofing contractor. We can do anything from minor repairs and preventative maintenance to major repairs and major capital replacements. We've got crews ready to go, and it has uh, been one of those years where our backlog is not what it normally is because of this pandemic. So uh, feel free to reach out. I'd, I'd much rather come look at your roof and help you uh, solve problems than sit in the office. So definitely give me a call or or uh, reach out to me through email if you're in within that service area that I mentioned. So that is Jimmy's Roofing Serve Tech. And the show notes will also have our website and my email address, even if you just have... Uh, some questions, you can shoot me an email. We could set up a time to talk on the phone for 15 minutes, and I can give you kind of like a free consultation kind of thing. So, all right, guys, that uh, sums that up. And uh, I want to kind of, I, I kind of wanted to ask you guys, you, you know, what what you're doing right now uh, in terms of your facilities. I know a lot of school districts. I've got some customers that are the the facility managers are having to go through and basically retrofit a bunch of plexiglass on on desks, and they're having to install like hand sanitation stations and mask distribution stations and stuff like that throughout all the different schools. Uh, the hospitals are usually there. Uh, those guys are kind of creating a, a COVID-19 wing. And that's where all the COVID stuff is, is focused and the rest of the hospital is operating as usual. Uh, but still hard to, I know, take care of some of the, some of the issues going on. And I, I'm just curious what, what it's like at your facilities. What, what's changed since, you know, last March, February, when all this kind of started coming out and and creating and wreaking havoc, uh, like the like the havoc we've been seeing from this pandemic. Um, what are some of the initiatives 
that uh, are standing operating uh, pr- procedures that maybe some of your facilities have implemented since this uh, pandemic actually came out. I'd be, I'd be super curious to know that. If you wouldn't mind sharing some of your thoughts and some of your experiences uh, with this pandemic and how it's affected you and your staff. Are you having to cut back on your staff? Are you having to, uh, are you having to hire more? Has it postponed major uh, projects like a capital roof replacement or replacing some HVAC units due to budgetary restraints? Uh, yeah, you know, just stuff like that. I'm just, I'm really curious to see how that's, uh, how that's playing out. And, uh, we'd, I'd really appreciate it. And also guys, I'm looking for, I'm looking for facility managers that want to come on the show and share some knowledge. Uh, if you, if you are a facility manager and you know, a facility manager who's a leader and has a lot of experience and, and would like to share some of that experience with our listeners, please reach out to me at j.huntsman at jimmysroofing.com. It'd be really helpful uh, ju- just, uh, I, I feel like getting facility managers on the show to talk about facility, ma- facilities management type kind of topics really is, um, the best way to go. I, I really like those conversations. I think you guys get a lot out of them. They tend to get a lot more downloads and listens and stuff like that as well. So, uh, if you guys know somebody, uh, United States or Canada or wherever, uh, definitely let me know. I'd love to get them on the show. So with that guys, today's guest, I have a great guest lined up for you today. The, uh, his name is Doug Donovan, and he is the uh, kind of founder, CEO of a company called Interplay Learning. And one of the things that we talked about, and I kind of wanted to, you know, maybe expand on in this intro, is the skills gap and the learning gap within uh, the, the maintenance and the, and the technician side of, of the industry. You know, it's it's getting it seems to be getting harder and harder, and it's it's this is the same for you guys or or for people like me that are in a position where we need to hire um, young guys that are that are kind of they're they're looking for maybe getting into a skilled trade and and skilled labor. Uh, the these kind of blue collar positions that uh, some of these guys are are um, you know it's like been this mentality to teach people to go go to college and get a get a degree in some, you know, German history or something like that. You, you, things that are really not going to pay off well in the marketplace. And I think that there's been a lot of attention on this lately. And a lot of the attention is kind of focused on, you know, you don't need to go get a college degree to to make a living in, in America or, or Canada. You don't need to go get a, a degree. In fact, sometimes uh, it, it's been said, and I would agree with this, that a college degree is not the right thing for everybody. And it has nothing to do with somebody's intelligence level or, or you know, something along that. That's just childish stuff to, to think or say. It, it has nothing to do with that. Some people are just like me. We like to work with our hands. And, and you know, I went to college and I hated it. I like to work with my hands. And, and so I, I feel like that that is a, it, it's, it's a skill and and something that lacks respect in society, and and it's it might be at the point to where in which it's coming back around to uh, a point in which that is a, a respected career path for people now. However, the problem with go, choosing that career path as a young man or a woman coming into you know facilities management or a trade as a plumber or an electrician or an HVAC tech or a roofer or or a framer or something along those lines. The, the the problem is a lack of training availability and and the, the 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 different varying requirements from each state uh, for in terms of certifications and, and credentials in order to operate some of this uh, some of this equipment or, or electrical uh, work and, and, and things of that nature. So um, this this conversation kind of ties all that together because I, I feel like we're seeing a new trend where there's there's starting to get a lot more we're, we're starting to see a lot more interest in in the younger generation the kids coming out of high school over the last couple of years um, <clears throat> maybe are are starting to see the value. In, in having a skilled trade rather than uh, going to college and, and getting some random degree that has no value in the marketplace. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of these degrees uh, are just not going to give these students, uh, the, these kids, any chance at a future. Uh, that, that, that The colleges kind of lure them in and, and they sell them on these degrees that have no marketable value once they graduate with it. And so they're stuck being the manager at a fast food restaurant or something like that, 
which there's nothing wrong with that, but you know dang well that that's not what their intention was when they first entered college. So instead of directing kids into that direction, uh, there's there's been somewhat of a focus to try to redirect some of the kids uh, more towards the skilled trades. And this is so beneficial to these guys. That, that is the right path for a lot of people because they they're, they don't want to sit in a cubicle all day long. They don't want to sit in an office. They don't have that kind of personality. They're skilled and they have the, the mechanical aptitude to work on things like HVAC equipment and electrical equipment and things like that. And so it's it's a, just a, it makes a lot more sense. Not to mention the, the money that is available to pay skilled labor and tradesmen uh, these days is a lot more than what it was 30, 40 years ago. So that the pay scale has really balanced itself out. You you get a journeyman plumber in his mid twenties uh, or late twenties is going to be making a lot more money and a, a much better income and a living than somebody who went and got a, a a college degree in gender studies or something like that. Uh, and and they're they're actually going to have a career path going forward. So the conversation that we have today is with Doug Donovan, and, he, and like I said, he owns Interplay Learning. And, and it's kind of along those lines of how do we get the skilled trades more training, more uh, hands-on or virtual or classroom kind of training to improve their skills. And he came up with just a wonderful, fascinating way to do this. This is a this is a program that is all online based or virtual reality where they actually send you this headset thing. You can get these headsets and, you, and it's like you're actually working on a furnace or you're working on a on an electrical panel or or, or plumbing system or or anything along those lines. And it's so interesting. But the online platform offers a lot of training for for different trades. So in your facilities. Let's say you have you have five or six guys on your staff as your technicians. You could have one of them specialize on, in, in electrical. You can have somebody specialize in HVAC maintenance and repairs. You can have somebody specialize in the, in the plumbing aspect of it. And all this training is available to you as a facility manager for your staff to train. And the money that it would cost to do that would for sure pay for itself in less service calls outside, having to outsource that to a service company to come in and make those repairs and maintenance items and, and things like that. And I, I do this all the time. I have customers that bring me in and I don't even charge them for this. A, a school district or a hospital or, or, or just a manufacturing facility with a lot of technicians, they'll bring me in and I'll spend the whole morning walking their staff through different ways and, and identifiers as to how to maintain a commercial roof how to check your 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 thermoplastic seams on that TPO, how to check the welds, how to make sure that the flashings are still good, how to seal them property, or properly, I'm sorry. Uh, as somebody drops a screwdriver and it, it gets driven into the membrane, this is how you fix it. And what that does is it allows these facilities to, instead of paying our fee or, or another roofing company's fee, which is going to be anywhere from $150 to $400 an hour, depending on what city you live in, uh, it's going to save you that money. Your guys have the know-how to do that. So by the way, if you are in uh, the, the, the the territory that I've mentioned, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, uh, Western Montana specifically, uh, and you want one of these seminars done at your facility, and and we're we're okay to do that with the pandemic and 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 the way we can we could set that up with social distancing and masks and all that kind of stuff. If you want that done, reach out to me. I'm happy to come out and do that. I actually really like doing those seminars and teaching your guys how to properly take care of these roofs. And and I have that passion. And I think that Doug Donovan, the my guest today, has that same kind of passion. He likes to see people learn and thrive and grow and offer people in the skills trade a an actual career path that makes sense for them. That actually has a vision, you know, gives them a vision to to move on into their career from from just an entry level maintenance technician to maybe a senior level maintenance technician and eventually moving into that facilities management role where they 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 just have that kind of experience and the know how and the know how and the knowledge and the skills. Uh, this training for facilities guys is super important, and I think that there's been a, a, a lack of training available to facility managers. And there's been a lack of, of uh, maybe interest in it uh, years ago, but now, 
facility managers, you guys are getting a lot more keyed into the importance of these kind of things and, and the training and the benefits to your facility and how efficient you can make your facility, how much, how many, how much cost savings kind of, uh, initiatives you could put into place by having people properly trained that know how to take care of your equipment and your buildings the right way. And that's what I really like about interplay learning. And you guys are really going to like this. Uh, and I, I would seriously encourage you to jump on the website, which will be in the show notes of interplay learning and, and really dive into the, the training that's available because it's going to be really beneficial to you and your staff. And so, um, with that said, guys, please welcome Doug Donovan with interplay learning. And as we, as we kind of investigate this whole topic that I talked about in the intro here and, uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next segment. All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the Toolbox Facilities Management Podcast. I'm, I've got a really great guest for you today. Uh, I'm excited to announce uh, Doug and Doug Donovan and his company and, and what he does. Uh, this is going to be a great episode, super resourceful for you guys. And uh, welcome to the show. Doug Donovan, how are you doing? Great. Great. Thanks, Jim, for having me on. No, oh, I appreciate you joining me. I'm uh, like I like I said already. I, I'm actually uh, really looking forward to this conversation. This is a super interesting topic for me. Uh, I'm very interested in in the training aspect for facilities, maintenance, engineering things things along those lines. And so, why don't we kick this off with you giving us a snapshot of who you are and what you do? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I run a company called Interplay Learning. And our sole focus has been uh, technical training uh, on uh, for tradespeople, for anybody working on buildings or the like. And we use online delivery to do it with the guts of it being point of view simulations. So, uh, you know, for your listeners, imagine a video game, uh, but instead of killing the bad guys, you are uh, fixing a rooftop unit or doing something of the like. So yeah, we, we got a, we're a software company and we've been de de developing and delivering technical training for, well, really 10 years since our beginning, but really four years at, at really rapid pace and delivering and large scale across the HVAC, electrical, plumbing industries and facility maintenance is actually our, in 2020, our fastest growing market by far. So hmm. it's kind of fun to uh, develop and deliver training for the people who are often left out. Yeah. Right? The, the yeah. sort of technical workers, actually the folks on the roofs and in the crawl spaces and the like. So uh, it's, it's a fun place to be, particularly, you know, during COVID people actually started calling these folks essential. Mm -hmm. So finally, exactly. something we've been saying for you know a decade. Uh, it's nice to hear the world kind of recognize how essential their activities are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I couldn't agree more. Uh, it's been it's been an I interesting dynamic shift. Uh, this 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 pandemic has definitely uh, sh shed some light on on things that uh, may have been hidden in the shadows uh, before. And so I, I think uh, this this is one of those things. Uh, prior to interplay learning, what, what did you do? Oh, geez. My, I've got a, uh, uh, one of those stories that sounds like, um, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but, and that's probably exactly why it sounds like that. I went from, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, investment banking finance in New York city as a hard charver, you know, 22 year old, and then went out in 99 time frame for it and did a dot com. started a dot com when that madness was going on mm -hmm. like many we blew up in 20 2000 i guess april 2000 when the sort of market the bubble burst uh then i went to business school and then i went and built a ski area so oh, really? uh, you know i'm familiar with your 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 uh western living if you will and built a small ski area outside of denver colorado called echo mountain Oh, gotcha. and uh, built that from scratch and we ran ran it for a few years and then we ended up selling it and then, you know, then naturally I went from there to uh, uh, another weird startup in San Diego, and now I'm in education training. So, like I said, a, a perfectly linear path <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the only consistency, you know, trying to figure out what the hell I'm good at. Yeah, sure. Sure. No, I, I uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are like that. So, um, 
I, I would say that that is not abnormal as much as uh, sometimes we don't want it to be. Um, yeah, that's right. So, so th- it's super interesting too. So, so about 10 years ago, you started Interplay Learning. Interplay Let, learning what, yeah. what was the idea where, or, or I guess, where did the idea for this type of training for facilities, management, maintenance, you know, the, these trades kind of, sure. uh, where, where did that idea come from? So the genesis was, I was with another, uh, you know, I'll quickly say I, I went, moved to San Diego, not for the job, but I was chasing a girl. And uh, that's where it all starts, right? Chasing mm-hmm. a girl. And she's now my wife, so I don't mind telling you that story. But the um, <laughs> down there, I worked this little crazy another startup. I, you know, I joined in after they had really just getting going. And one of the things we were doing were training energy auditors, right? The folks who are walking around, mostly residential, but you've seen them in commercial buildings as well, right? Where mm-hmm. they're trying to tighten up buildings and make sure they're energy efficient. And so one program we ran was an instructor-led training for a couple certifications in that space. And while I thought we were putting on pretty powerful training programs, and we used some online, but some in person, and only one day in the field, that's really all the math supported, right? The business model didn't allow us to take them to 10 days in the field. Yeah. But the reality is to learn that trade, and it's kind of a niche trade, but to learn that trade, you just need to be in a lot of houses and see a lot of different variables. And that's the only way you can really get good at that. And so while our students would graduate and pass the national certification, which is a, a one called BPI, it was very clear. They didn't quite know what they were doing. And so, you know, we said, you know, wonder if you could use simulation, like, uh, like the military had been doing medical aviation industries, right? Using simulation for scenario training. Mm-hmm. And could you just basically look at what they did and could you bring that to energy auditing so that that student could go through 75 different houses in a virtual setting because energy auditing is really cognitive, like most of these trades, when you actually do the analysis. And so our ability in simulation to change variables, like give it a different furnace type, give it different pressures, give it a different insulation, all those things that matter for energy efficiency, and put people through repetitions and give them basically condense the experience uh, of being in the field. And so we were surprised. One, we thought, geez, that would be a really interesting application. And then we lo- looked around the trades and said, geez, no one's doing this in HVAC or electrical or in plumbing or in facility maintenance. Can't we leverage that education technology, which had proven to be so successful for soldiers or surgeons, uh, and bring it to the trades? And that was the genesis of this whole thing. Interesting. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, can you walk us through just given giving like maybe a bird's eye view of of what what this training entails and and kind of uh, we haven't quite painted the picture of of yes. what this training is so so yeah. can you paint it for us yeah so um first of all let's start yeah you know, how you get there it's all online right so and we recognize that now we're sitting in a really interesting spot because anybody who was reluctant to do online, COVID kind of forced them to look online. And so we've seen our business explode and really the last year and a half, but but even accelerate more recently. But so everything's online. We have an on-demand online catalog of learning uh, that is dedicated to the electrical, mechanical, industrial, real hands-on worker. So are you familiar with something like LinkedIn Learning? Yes. Uh, okay, LinkedIn Learning, you might, you know, you might get the pop-ups or maybe you actually have a LinkedIn Learning subscription and there's something like 4200 courses for everything from, you know, making better PowerPoints to strategy analysis to uh, coding to, you know, coding JavaScript, right? So there's this massive catalog of learning that people access all the time, right? Because our lives are different now. We're sort of, we like to say, learning and earning all the time, right? You're, mm-hmm. I'm sure, Jim, you've got two books you're reading and you're listening to other podcasts, right? We're learning and earning all the time. And mm-hmm. um, the, the there's been a number of online on-demand catalogs like LinkedIn Learning that have really delivered high value to, let's lazily say, the white-collar world. And so those, those have really taken off and supported a lot of knowledge workers and 
building different skills and rescaling and upscaling, et cetera, whether that's coding or marketing or business stuff. But this, the worker that we're talking about, the blue collar worker, the electrical, mechanical, industrial worker, was effectively left out of this. And so uh, three years ago, we said, hey, where's that catalog? Where's the catalog to learn about torque? Where's the catalog to learn about you know, how a refrigeration cycle works? How, where's the catalog on how to troubleshoot a heat pump or uh, fix some drainage or you know, th things like that? Why, why doesn't that exist? And so we began building it in 2016. And, and like I said, what we're, we've been doing this for 10 years and we really took the knowledge that we learned in six, the first six um, and, and really and launched it in 2016 to build a big catalog. So now when you log in and you access it online and what happens is companies buy it. So let's say, um, uh, you know, whatever, let's call it Impala Apartments has six technicians uh, or building engineers. So they'll buy six seats on this catalog. Uh, it's really low priced and they'll, and they'll put their teams in there to say, good, I want, you know, Sally, I want you to work on the plumbing content. Bobby, I want you to work on the electrical content. And so there's just now there's hundreds of hours of learning there for this, for this uh, hands-on worker in the trades, you know, in the, in the skills that they need, right? Electrical, yeah. mechanical. Yeah. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think w what I really like about it, so um, to a little bit of background on me, I, I used to be the executive director for uh, an organization called Intermountain Building Operators Association. Okay. And that was, uh, the, the idea with this organization was to certify facilities and maintenance people uh, in something called the building operator certification, right? And you have level one and level two. And, and the, the problem with that training is it would require an instructor to uh, come to the site or come to the location of the, the training. Maybe the instructor lives in Montana and he, he needed to go to Boise. Uh, not only that, it took the maintenance personnel uh, 10 working days and the, in which they would have to attend the training. And so it, it, it got this, it took the, the personnel off of the facility and out of, off the site uh, for this 10 days. And it, it's, it's an excellent training. It's a, it's a great program. However, the logistics and, and the time that it took for, for this certification uh, for, that, that wasn't necessarily super specific to what you're talking about, such sure. as, you know, uh, working on a, on a rooftop unit or, or solar or lighting or something like that. Um, it was more generalized. And so sure. where, where with this, it seems like, there's a lot less headache in terms of the logistics and, and the time away from, from the actual facility where, where they're needed. Uh, and that's where my interest is because I, I, and what do you think about that? Is that, is that maybe a problem that, that uh, this industry has been uh, in search of solving for a long time? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a huge problem, right? We're really, what you're really talking about is how do you scale technical training, right? Cause think mm -hmm. about that doesn't scale, right? The reason the numbers aren't as big and you haven't, we haven't trained as many people in this industry or the trades is because the traditional method of training, which is mostly job shadowing and uh, et cetera, just doesn't scale. And you're, you're certainly well aware of the skills gap and I'm sure your, your listeners feel that, right? They don't have enough building engineers or building technicians or whatever, you know, they're, they're calling their, their staff who are actually fixing and running the building. Yeah. And you know, they're actually relying probably more on third party companies like your, your, yourselves, right? Cause they just don't have even for the basic stuff, which frankly they should do some of that in house. And so they're, they're, they're undermanned. The staff is generally underskilled. And part of the problem is if you're undermanned and underskilled, you certainly can't afford to send someone away for 10 days. And, and that's, so that's, that was a major, major hiccup with getting these uh, classes, uh, getting those seats filled for these classes was, was the facilities couldn't afford to have their maintenance staff away for that long of a time. That's exactly right. So now imagine bringing training to them uh, anytime, anywhere, right? So we haven't talked about the delivery of this training, but we deliver it on all devices, desktops, laptops, tablets, right? And a lot of those folks are using tablets now for, you know, business uh, workflow, whether it's, you know, inventory or ma maintenance tracking or the like. Mm -hmm. So they already have the tablets. And now imagine accessing the learning that's really job relevant for them. 
the last piece is, and uh, you know, I'm always reluctant to bring this up too early because people really get fixed on it is that same content that I'm talking about is also available in virtual reality. So if you have the headsets and we can talk a little bit about what that, that looks like, you can actually put that headset on and, you know, as far as your brain knows, you're on a rooftop <laughs> and you wow. are fixing a 12 ton, you know, rooftop unit or working through a preventative maintenance procedure in virtual reality with your multimeter or with your manifold or, you know, depending on the tools you need uh, on the job. So that same simulation that I talked about earlier, right, those 2D simulations that you do on tablets, we can also if you uh, if you've invested in virtual reality deliver it there and that's that is like a joy of my life right now jim giving people that experience for the first time because you rarely in life get to kind of blow someone's mind <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> put this headset on and you're on your knees fixing an outdoor unit and you take it off and you look at me and you usually say something like holy cow <laughs> <laughs> holy cow is right. yes that's right so yeah so that's a you know that's the shiny object that gets us a lot of even national you know a lot of national attention um but the reality is large part of the consumption now is on 2d devices just because of convenience and etc mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i can you can you kind of expand on uh basically all what, what what all does this training have like we we talked a little bit about hvac and rooftop units uh kind of give us an idea of what what the boundaries are there yeah yeah so the content is uh super deep in hvac because that's really where our roots were and it's still our biggest market and we do a lot of work not only with service companies or any facilities who are doing their own you know hvac stuff but a lot of the big manufacturers ream and carrier and jci etc we also do work for them mm -hmm. providing and delivering specific training uh, but then we also have uh, a growing and you know, pretty deep plumbing catalog uh, electrical catalog Facility maintenance with a little heavier emphasis currently on multifamily, and I know your audience is a little more in the commercial, you know, commercial buildings, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of, you know, overlap, as you can imagine, on the fundamentals for sure, but our catalog's growing and we're adding some big chillers right now as we speak for the, the bigger commercial facilities and some of the bigger boilers and that type of thing. So really focusing on the the trades about keeping a building, an existing building running, right, for mm -hmm. maintenance and um, so it's less about construction, frankly, and more about service right now. And, and we do that for a number of reasons. One, we just saw a huge need in the marketplace, but two, because those simulations that we talked about really set up well for learning how to do diagnostic troubleshooting, learning how to do, you know, basic inspections and commissioning, learning how to do preventative maintenance, those critical activities for the building engineers or building technicians, um, that's that's our focus and so the catalog is made up of those simulations as i talked about which you can imagine are really active you're physically doing the job mm -hmm. and then a lot of other good high, i would say dynamic um videos on those those similar similar things right some of the more knowledge background like what's ohm's law and i got to learn more about the refrigeration cycle some of the foundational stuff will fill in with a lot of backfill with a lot of video content does that make sense yeah absolutely um it it what makes sense is uh, a facility uh, let, let's let's take a hospital for example you've got your facility director and he's got a staff of maybe 10 maintenance technicians depending on the side of the uh, or size of the hospital uh, if in a lot of cases they are essentially hiring that that kind of work out um, you know the 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 preventative maintenance on all the rooftop units uh, mm -hmm. for example or or minor repairs, you know, like something goes out. Yep. Uh, uh, I can't think of any of the names of a, a inside of a co commercial rooftop unit off the top of my head, but um, the condenser, like, yeah, like you a know, compressor, yeah, compressor exactly. goes out, yeah. uh, you know, something like that. The, the, and so they're they're hiring that out third party for for these service companies to come in, and it's this costing a fortune. Where uh, the I just feel like. The, the more that they can do in-house, it's it's so much more efficient and it's so much more cost effective for the facility. Uh, and and I do that a lot with with commercial roofing because that's that's what I do in uh, in I, I say in real life I, I'm yeah. in the commercial roofing industry. 
And, uh, you know, I, I try to do, I, I train a lot of facility engineers and, and directors uh, and their staff how to actually take care of these big commercial flat roofs so that they don't have to call uh, us right. all the time. And, and so what, what is your thought on that? And, and what, what kind of information or data do you have that, that shows an increase in efficiently, in efficiency or cost effectiveness? Yeah, so uh, you've sort of identified for the facility maintenance world, the two biggest you know, pain points that were uh, that our clients say, yes, you are helping me solve this. Number one is reducing third-party calls, right? Because if they do the proper maintenance, uh, preventative maintenance, they just have to make fewer calls. Or, um, or in the multifamily space or, you know, tenant space, they have happier customers because they can send somebody quickly to deal with an air conditioning issue or a lighting or a plumbing issue, et cetera, mm -hmm. in, that, uh, in that unit or in that, um, uh, in that room. So they can, so those are the two, that, that's sort of number one. And then number two is career laddering. They've been really thankful for us giving them a system of learning and uh, career laddering and development. So you can uh, bring someone in and say, look, this is what, you know, you're starting as a porter or you're starting as a groundskeeper, but this is, we're going to give you access to this learning platform. There are, you know, learning paths on there pre-established. Maybe the company establishes them. Maybe we help them establish. This is your path of learning. And when you get to this level, you're, you could become a junior technician and, you know, you get to this level, you become a full tech or a building engineer and you, you start laying out that career path. And that's something I would bet anybody out there listening goes, Oh, we don't have anything like that, but we've always talked about bad turnover issues and, you know, different things. And because there hasn't been a solution for constant employment development, which, you know, COVID has sort of brought to the fore. Like if, you know, your, your, your powers and your people, and if you're not investing in your people, you're in, you're in some trouble. So sure. those are the two things you, we see people buying it for primarily is reduce the third party calls because they can do more, more in house. And then two, build up a, a an employee development, a technician development program using our system as a foundation. Does that, that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. I love it. I think, uh, I think that that's one of the reasons why uh, within the industry of, of facilities maintenance and, and uh, the, the trades, uh, this, this, any kind of, even we can even have that fall into the construction industry. Um, one of the struggles has been, is what you just talked about the lack of a career path so so the, what has been the motivation for somebody uh, coming out of high school and going to a trade school uh, and and going to work at a school district on, on the facilities uh, team you know what what is the career path well unfortunately most uh, over the over the past few decades uh, there just really hasn't been much of a career path. There's not a lot of room for advancement or, or trainings offered. And, and I think that that's, that's created like a skills gap and, a, and really a, a personnel gap. Uh, it's very difficult for these facilities sometimes to find maintenance people uh, that, that want to see this as a career. And yep, that's right. That's right. It, and and I, I, I would assume that you have a lot more insight into that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've you've probably read about it and you see it, you know, it does get national news, the skills gap when it comes to trades and it's uh, it's acute at this point and in, in getting worse and you, you've probably even heard the numbers in terms of the average trades person or facility maintenance engineer is, mm -hmm. you know, low, low high 50s, low, low 60s. They've been up and down stairs and ladders and on their knees their whole life, right? Like they're, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher for them to be out there. In my generation, I'm in my late 40s, we were told not to get into those careers, right? We were told, go get your humanities degree and become a lawyer and four-year degree is everything. And mm -hmm. in my generation's half of the baby boomers to begin with, right? So the baby boomers were 70 plus million, were more like 33 million. So you already have a demographic problem just population-wise. Now you've got this de-emphasis of these hard skills that we're talking about. And you have a massive skills gap that is going to you know, is frankly not going to be filled by my generation, but the genera you know, the Gen Zs, millennials, even the late millennials and Gen mm -hmm. Zs. Mm -hmm. And so you can see it, you hear it in the national conversation, like we got to stand up the training back 
vocational training has now become, quote, hot on a political level because you got 40 million people out of work because of COVID. Many of the jobs won't come back. Um, a lot of the younger generations have been sold this kind of bill of goods around these gig jobs, like, oh, super flexible, be an Uber driver and a barista. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it's hard, right? That sounds good when you're 22. And then you're 27, you realize, like, I haven't gone anywhere. I have no career development. I have no real path forward. And, and meanwhile, if they, you know, many of them would have been perfectly uh, suited for what, what are incredible careers, not jobs, but incredible careers, whether that's in, yeah, building maintenance and all of that opens up or or the service side of it where you're working with an HVAC or plumbing or uh, electrical service firm. I mean, we talk a lot at Interplay Learning and, and one of the reasons I think the company has been, you know, brings such passion, the employees bring such passion is we believe better careers mean better lives. Yeah. And so if we can deliver uh, a training path and, you know, visibility into what that looks like as you advance in your skills. Like that, that, that seems like a, a worthy contribution um, to some of these challenges out there, both on the, the folks who are disconnected and then all these jobs that need filled. And yeah. if we can help yeah. bridge that gap, you know, that's, that's what we're out there trying to do. Gosh, you're exactly right. Yeah. That uh, it's such an issue. Uh, and, and so I, I think that this, this is a kind of training and I want, I want to get a little bit, I want to kind of circle back to the training here in just a minute, but we're, we're talking about this skills gap and, and, and where that could go. Where does that leave us when, when the people that are in these positions now, like you said, are nearing the retirement age and, and there's just not a lot of replacement options for them. Um, and, and I think that that is, it's going to create a problem. It's going to create a gap where, where, uh, you know, the, these facilities, they, I would say, uh, in terms of importance, the facilities management team is, is way up there with the C-suite. Uh, the, these, these are the people that, that make the build, building function, the, the electrical, the HVAC. Nothing happens in July in, uh, like you're in Austin, Texas. Uh, can you imagine a commercial facility without air conditioning? That's right. You send people home. There is it is out of big out of order sign on the front door. Um, but yeah, it's not you saying like what's going to happen. The reality is it's happening. And so we've you know we've been at this for a number of years, as I told you. But really, about a year ago, I, we just felt like if we were pushing a stone up a hill for a number of years, it cleared the the apex, and now it's racing downhill. Mm. And I think what's really happened is we as we get to know our customers, why they bought, like why do you buy it now? Why are you doing this now? More and more decided, look, I got to solve this for myself. I've been talking about, you know, we don't have any tax and uh, the trade schools are not producing, you know, quality or producing enough near enough or the vocational high schools in our area shut down or the apprenticeship program that used to exist is gone, right? There's a lot of that for 15 years. And really in the last couple, we've seen uh, building owners and, and, you know, whether it's big service managers or facility directors saying, I got to solve this myself. And nobody's going to solve it for me. So what do they do? They say, well, I got to set up my own training program. That obviously comes with all kinds of, you know, challenges. One of the first things they do is they look, what are the resources online, right? Where do I, where could I get a foundational training program? And, and that's what's, you know, leading them to us. So we know that's, that, that acute pain is no longer theoretical. Um, it's real for, I mean, the skills gap is real for these folks. And so yeah, that's, been, sure. that's been a big business driver for us. What is the skill mill? Uh, skill mill. That is the name of the platform, the actual catalog. So you'll get a, uh, an access, you know, just like you might, you know, you might have your monthly access to Spotify or whatever. So you get a monthly subscription to skill mill and that's the catalog, right? That's the catalog and all the features that come on that were things like, you know, dashboards for, for either instructors or dashboards for service managers or, you know, facility supervisors or the like, um, all the, the classic sort of ed tech capabilities that have been developed and been delivering in the white collar world, we're now bringing to this, the hands-on worker. And um, so that's what's called a learning management system, right? So I can take somebody from A to B and recommend what class you should take next. I can see Jim, you know, Jim struggling with 
whatever it is, electrical 201. All right, then let's, let's send them through this other course because that'll give them better foundation and bring them back, right? It has some smarts to do that, to give you a competency path. Um, and it's all, it all sits on the product, which we call skill mill. So what, what has your experience been with, uh, let, let's, I, I always like to use scenarios. I always like to use scenarios. So we, uh, a facility with, uh, they, let's say they've got 20 or 30 buildings in their charge. He's got a staff of 20 or 30 guys. What, what's been your experience with how they conduct this training? Is it something like the, the facility manager gets his, his uh, maintenance staff together, these technicians, uh, once a week and you go through different courses on the skill mill or are they, they, they kind of separating them out and specifying, I want you to focus on the HVAC, you focus yep. on electrical. Yep. Uh, is that, is that kind of more what you've seen? No, we've seen, we've seen definitely, you know, some, some different best practices. So there is no one way I would say for the organizations that almost had no training, right. Other than sh- job shadowing, which frankly is not a, real sustainable training or effective training mechanism yeah. that they'll actually use this as their foundational training program. And it usually starts with their younger techs, right? That's where we see people go, you know, the older techs kind of say, Oh, I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to take these classes. And that's fine. We say that's fine. And so let's say you have that 20 person, you know, staff across 12 buildings or whatever it is, they'll take, you know, they'll, by eight to 10 seats for let's say anybody in their staff that's less than five years. Those people will often take the pre uh, competency exams, the assessments, so we can identify what they know and don't know. And then we'll serve them a personalized learning path, like depending on the outcomes. And you'll have a supervisor uh, trainer just kind of overseeing that a little bit. Sometimes you get more active supervisors who actually assign courses that say, oh, I'm developing you on the HVAC side, so I'm going to assign you these learning paths, or competency paths, or set of courses. And so some people will use it for to drive uh, a morning meeting, right, like a weekly technical war- morning meeting where they'll actually pull up a simulation on the big screen and say, hey, we're going to go to this rooftop unit. I want to show you some preventative maintenance steps, et cetera, right? So they'll use it sort of broad social learning. Uh, some of them will say, okay, you're joining Jim, our company. I want, you know, you're going to be following Jose for the next six months. And, but by the way, you have a login to, uh, you know, our, our learning management system that if they already had one, if they're a big facility, we plug in. Or if they say we're standalone, you're going to log in there. And I want you to follow these two learning packs, paths. And in some of your downtime, I want you logging in. And I'd like to see you get into certain levels at three months and at six months. And, and in some cases, Jim, they'll actually link pay raises to it. So they'll say, hmm. geez, if you get past all the intermediate courses, we'll move you up to 50 an hour uh, or whatever it is, because there, you know, we, we can show you pretty good evidence that if people are trained in this, it will lead to savings, more efficiencies on the job, et cetera. So uh, on that level, and, and I, I think it kind of touched on this with, for the virtual reality, um, as we're because we're kind of we're kind of keyed in on this remote learning this this mm-hmm. uh you know in the facility how does the virtual virtual reality these uh these devices that that people put on their heads how does that work do you send those to them or yeah is- so so that's a great question so I mean, this is all pre-covid because covid kind of sidelined that whole effort uh-huh. um just because two things one the supply lines for the equipment got kind of screwy between here and china and then two you VR is often still at this point, uh, what I would call a communal device, right? Somebody's using it and then someone else is using it. And so you can imagine not doing a whole lot of handing around devices to each other these days. Um, But let's, let's pretend that there isn't a global pandemic going on. And, um, and (laughs) you know, this was back in before, before February. And frankly, you know, come this February, I imagine we'll start ramping up in many cases, the bigger facilities, let's say that, you know, that, let's do the scenario that someone who owns 20 facilities, uh, they probably have some kind of training center or one of their facilities has a back, you know, big back room that they do. Typically they'll do their training in, Right. And mm-hmm. so what they'll often do is divide by say two or three setups and the headsets are only $300. Now it's no longer what it used to be. Now I won't get into the uh, details. There's also PC based ones that are a little more expensive and you need the PC and they have more power, but there's a couple wa- ways you consume it, but they'll buy a couple headsets and they're there. So think of it as like a, 
just a station, like a lab station. They're there. Mm -hmm. And so people, uh, the engineers or the like would come in and they could do their coursework either on their mobile phones. So although the Sims don't really work great on really small screens, but you know, on, on mobile devices like iPads or Androids, or they say, Oh, I'm going to do these simulations in the VR environment. So they'll actually use the facilities uh, VR environment. A lot of the distributors now are starting, you know, where they host a lot of training for, you can mm -hmm. imagine for like HVAC training, like carrier stood up 82 training centers with virtual reality. Uh, in the last, right before February. So that started happening there. Some of the big union training centers, same thing. We have um, the sheet metal workers, their, their training arms called ITI. And I think they've got 65 training centers that focus on service and they've, they've bought VR devices for all of those. So think of the VR devices like uh, you're building, you get a little lab in a box, right? So if you want, instead of having a, a big room in the back with all this equipment you could practice on. Now you just use a virtual version of it. So that the, you have this, you have access to a lot of virtual equipment that you might not otherwise be able to expose your, your team members I, to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. Uh, I I've got, I've got one customer of mine uh, with it within uh, for, for our roofing company where uh, these guys, it's a school district. And I, I believe that there's a facility manager and there's eight, eight technicians on staff and they all, they all do kind of have a specialty, but they, they always run little competitions. And one of them was they were, um, they were painting uh, one wing of one of the high schools and they, they would compete with each other uh, with, you know, who, who could paint the room the fastest kind of thing. And they, they even had prizes, uh, like a gift card to Cabela's or, or something like that. But anyway, right, right, sure. I, I can Got imagine this. Game of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting if, if, a, if, a, somebody like that, like a school district like that had a couple of these, uh, these headsets and they could actually, uh, have have competitions as to who who diagnosed the furnace the fastest or or most accurately or something along those lines. Is there any kind of like gaming element? There is. The there sure is. There's is actually there? a, a leaderboard, and you mm -hmm. can have your own internal leaderboard. And every time you complete learning activities, you earn points, right? And those points are only valued in <laughs> the idea that you're advancing and and. Uh -huh. and a reference value and so yeah we have people using leaderboards uh we've done it at conferences where we've had some you know contests for troubleshooting and time people etc or procedures and time people and that's always fun so yeah you can bring a gaming element inside the sims themselves we've always talked about and everyone always jumps on it like you know the vision of like pretending you know you get shocked and what happens in the you know virtual environment. <laughs> we always have high visions of doing that kind of thing, but, and we'll have some fun twist in there, but mostly we keep it relatively you know, serious because a lot of this stuff, there's safety relation, you know, safety is involved and yeah. Uh, yeah. we want to make sure people appreciate, you know, what, what we're doing is really real training. And, and just because it's in a virtual environment and frankly more safe than you can, you know, you can imagine than in many training environments, um, we make sure that safety is a huge emphasis. So, so we end up taking a lot of the gaming inside the Sims out, which is a little sad because if they are fun. You can add a layer of fun, but uh, it's a bit of a balancing act, as you can imagine. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Is there any kind of credential or certification that technicians can get out of this training? Yeah, good question. So uh, as you know, the trades generally are kind of a patchwork state by state, right? Between licensure and credentialing. Mm -hmm. So for example, in HVAC or in plumbing in Texas, you know, you know what you have to do to become a plumber in Texas. Huh. You just have to declare I'm a plumber. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. There's not a single licensure you need for the whole state. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. The same thing a lot in the Southeast, but if we go to the Northeast, obviously you become a plumber. You might have to, you know, register with the workforce board and do certain hours or do or pass some exams. So, so let me just preface everything by state by state. It's all completely different. But what we generally do is the content is big and deep enough. It prepares them for third party exams. So the credential is things like an HVAC. You might sit for the NATE exams, if you're familiar with NATE, the National yep. Association of Tech. So all of our stuff aligns with all the NATE. They're called, you know, Kates, I think they're called, knowledge abilities. And uh, anyway, 
Um, so our content aligns for that and gets you ready for those exams. In some cases, we have partnerships with online exam companies for like OSHA 10 or for Nate or EPA 608, right? If you're touching refrigerants. Yep, so yep. we sort of stay out of the direct credentialing game. Uh, but instead are sort of the training arm before you would sit for an exam, depending on the, the state licensure and, and credentialing requirements. Gotcha. That's super interesting. Yeah, that Nate, uh, the Nate exam and a Nate certification is is not is not super easy to get. So it is uh, not. Yeah, is yeah, not. that's it's a great credential. And we're actually the one, if you go to the Nate website and you start saying, hey, I want to get some of these credentials, they'll, they'll if they say if you want to do it online, do it with our partners here and it's interplay learning. So they'll click, you'll be able to click right through it our website. So, you know, we recognize how the outcomes, both, you know, sort of the registered outcomes is important to the learning too. Hmm. We'd like to think we lived in a world where learning just had value on its own, but the reality is those credentials, you know, are valuable. So we make sure to make that really easy to move and, and get those credentials. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, and, and I guess kind of as we're, as we're kind of winding this down, do you have any data in terms of results that facility management or facility managers have been able to use or, or report back to some of the benefits of using the training over a given amount of time uh, stories that uh, yeah. maybe a facility manager listening to this can relate to? Well, because our depth, like I said, we've really just started in facility maintenance and management rather in, in the la in 2020. Mm -hmm. Our depth has more been on the service side, you know, the trades, the the service companies themselves. So we have a number of studies that show, you know, the reduced callback numbers, right? So if you're Bob's heating and cooling and you obviously it's a cost to roll a truck every time. And if you get got to roll it twice and you're not getting paid twice, it costs you a lot of money. So, you yep. know, we've got some statistics that will show things like reduced callbacks by 25% because, you know, people are more properly trained on that side of things on the facility maintenance side. Um, we just did a case study with, um, in apartments. Again, it's not commercial because we're just, like I said, we're really just starting to, get get going on the commercial side um the company used us ex extensively during COVID, so they had to go to shift working for you know spacing reasons and the mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and so i think there's there they're across 700 buildings so it's a very big company and so they had all these technicians logging in 40 hours a week when they were off so they were still getting paid they weren't on site. Instead, they were using Interplay. And so we're now just starting to show the test out, like what the, what the, um, what that means for on the job, like what's actually happening. But what's nice is even before we can, you know, we gather those results, right? Because that'll take six months to gather. Oh, geez, have we had, you know, lower third party costs, et cetera. That's going to take some time. But what, what they did do was a lot of surveys on the way out, like did, you know, does this give you more confidence on your job? Are you more competent in these things, you know, and, and took survey data. And so they're ecstatic because all of a sudden they've got this huge staff that said, geez, like really buying into wanting to get better and mm -hmm. buying into understanding what, why this training is valuable. And sometimes, you know, it takes you to force to get used it, you know, to use it, right. It's like going sure, to the gym sure. a little bit. Training is, you know, not one of those things that we, you know, readily do. Sometimes you need pushed a little bit and the COVID situation pushed it. And, and now the results have been phenomenal. The nice part about cool. like the VR and some of the simulation training is that we've modeled it after is there are stacks and stacks and stacks of military, medical, and aviation studies of showing the effectiveness of simulation-based training versus instructor-led and the like. And simulation always outpaces all other forms. There's a reason the Department of Defense would spend, you know, six million dollars on a on a simulator to try to learn, you know, teach soldiers something because it saved lives. It's just a really effective mm -hmm. means of, of training. So the pedagogy is has been vetted and is, is is extremely sound. And so we'll continue to gather more customer stories for our, you know, return on investment and. Uh, success, uh, success stories. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I mean, essentially the VR, I mean, that's, that's essentially hands-on training. Exactly. And, and, and so that's I, why it, it just makes sense. It would outpace. Um, yeah, I, I love the idea. I love the idea because I, I have sat, 
uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I have sat for, for building operators courses and, and different trainings and, and listened to an instructor for eight hours with a quick lunch break. And, you know, you just kind of, you get a lot in the morning and, and then it starts tapering off. And, yeah, and forget so it. Yeah. Forget you know what I mean? I mean yeah. And, and think about what you want to do, right? Your guy works with his hands, right? Yeah, like you want to get yeah. in there and do it. And, and, uh, you know, we're not, ta- we're not studying tort law here. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. So people want to get in there. And so what we found, and, you know, I won't get dork too dorky on the, the brain science and stuff, but one thing when it comes to virtual reality, like I like to explain for sort of the power is, uh, uh, what it can do is you know what's what color is the rug in your you're not in your living room now right so what color is the rug in your living room jim uh brown okay so what you did to get that was you actually created that space in your head Mm -hmm. you created the living room and then you look down you know in your head right in your memory and so you use space as your first tool to pull that information forward and we do that in almost everything we do if there's a if there's space we can draw from we're going to go ahead and do that part of the reason hands-on training is so good and it is for sure is that not just that you're actually physically touching it and there's a whole you know there's reasons for what that does for your brain too but you actually then after the fact a month later still have that space to draw back to in your head and be like, oh yeah i remember i was on that roof and we did this okay because you have that space and so in vr you can effectively create that space Not only that, you talk about the morning and the afternoons and your presence. You're really talking about your presence, right? Like you're into it for a few hours in the morning. And even that, you're into Mm -hmm. it, but there's six other people or 12 other people around you. And there's constant like subtle distractions. So, you know, what level of presence? Now put the headset on (laughs) and we'll put you in a, you know, in in a situation where you got to redo some electrical work in a, in a building, like you're there, your presence is almost a hundred percent in the virtual setting. Cause you're, you're literally occluding the rest of the world around you. And so you're going to find, and I always challenge people after they've tried the, the Sims and VR, I say, do me a favor in five days, think about what you did in this space. And though, and it's astounding at how crisp those memories will be because of that presence. And so, yeah, there's a lot of brain science between the power of virtual reality and the application, in, in this case, of, of hands-on training. So not only is it super scalable, it's just, you, you know, incredibly provenly effective. Yeah, yeah, super fascinating. I, I could geek out on that kind of stuff all day long. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a great topic. So how, how can uh, facility managers track interplay learning down? Best way to do it is just go to the website, inter- interplay learning, I N T E R play learning.com, and you'll see, you know, the website breaks it out into, you know, you buying it for yourself or because people buy it on their own, right? Like Bob mm-hmm. wants to get better, he gets in there and pays 20 bucks a month and off he goes, or, or people buy it for their team. So you'll see, you know, enterprise level, company level, et cetera. Uh, because we're sort of solving problems in a lot of, in a lot of different ways for technical learners. And, and, you know, if there's some interest there, you're going to probably put some info in and one of our sales reps will take you through what the product looks like. And um, yeah, so they'll just take you around and yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, it's all, you know, classic SaaS business, right? Software as a service, everything's there. What you see is what you get online. So guys, I'm going to put that in the show notes. So you'll be able to jump on the website and kind of, kind of dig around in there and find out as much as you can and maybe reach out to the, to interplay learning and, and find out more. Uh, I, I think that this is, this is powerful training. I, I feel like this is something that a lot of facilities can, can benefit. Uh, imagine having your very own Nate certified HVAC te- technician on staff uh, the the amount of service calls that you could reduce within your facilities and how much more efficient you would become uh, and cost savings uh, that, that you can create for your facility. I think this is super powerful. So, uh, Doug, I really appreciate you coming on. This has been really fascinating for me. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. And let me, I'll give my, num, uh, my info direct. My email is ddonovan, D-O-N-O-V-A-N. So ddonovan at interplaylearning.com. And the reason I throw it out there and definitely want it is we haven't built a lot of content yet for things like hospitals or schools. So if there are certain pieces of content that you know, like, geez, we need – if we had training on 
these two or three things, geez, what a difference that would make. We're now, as we start moving now from commercial to some of these other buildings, trying to learn what does the market need? And so I love hearing from potential customers saying, geez, if you just had a, these three types of boilers, those are most of our buildings and that would save us a lot of money. So I welcome okay. that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll put your email in the show notes as well. So, right. so guys, take advantage of that. That's the, this is a huge resource. So, um, yeah, this has been great, Doug. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Jim. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, we uh, obviously, and I, I say this to a lot of guests, and I, I'm sincere when I say it. Let's do this again. Keep us posted as to uh, how things kind of play out with Interplay Learning, and and as you guys come out with new things, let's uh, get you back on the show and and keep everybody kind of apprised of that. Will do. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you later. Yeah.